The solution to every problem lives within you. Find out what I mean on today's fascinating interview. As a sixth generation pastor, Eric Johnson has a passion to see transformation take place in people, cities, and nations. Eric serves on the senior leadership team of Bethel Church in Redding, California, alongside his parents, Bill and Benny Johnson. A best-selling author, Eric longs to see people gain confidence and reach their true potential. This is the driving force behind his books, Momentum and Christ in You, Why God Trusts You More Than You Trust Yourself. From Bethel Church in Redding, California, please welcome Eric Johnson. Hey, welcome, man. Good to have you here. Oh, thanks. So good to be here. So Christ in You, why did you write this book? You know, uh, it's one of the most popular verses in the Bible. I mean, Christ in You, the hope of glory. Yeah. I think a lot of people think it's more for someday when I get to heaven. And I really wanted to dive into what does it mean now? What does it actually mean to have Jesus in you now? And what, how can that be expressed? And so I wanted to explore that. So. That's cool because, you know, a lot of us growing up have heard so many speakers that talk about heaven. Yeah. So everything's about heaven. Yeah. It says that's where you're going to have the mansion. That's where every tear is going to get wiped away. But we're going to kind of live like hell down here, praying for Jesus to come rescue us. Totally, yeah. And I like the fact that you address, no, he's in us. What can yeah. we do now? Yeah, uh, that's, it's such an untapped resource, if you will. Totally. And so that's why I'm fascinated by the, the topic. All right, so where would we start in having people watch? If maybe they've settled into a little of religiosity, just being people who watch what God is doing, where would you start with this? You know, for me, um, I, would, I encourage people, we have to kind of go back to the original design. Okay. And that, for me, that was starting Genesis 1. You know, and God made man in his own image. And the end of that, he said, it is very good. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, I think most, most church life, church world view on humanity is viewed through Genesis chapter 3, which is the fall of man and sin. Right. And so I, I think we have to go back a little bit farther than that. And okay, what was God thinking when he made us, yeah. when he made humanity? Mm -hmm. When we do that, I think we get a much accurate value and perspective on humanity from God's perspective. Now, sin definitely messed things up, if you will, but God still had original design in mind. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to start there. And so that's, that's, that's why I try to take pe people back to that, because most most, I think most misconceptions about Christ in you is because we don't have God's value for us in the first place. And so it's more of a rescue me, save me, which we need that because of sin. But God had a bigger plan in mind. And so that's why I take people back to. That's cool because when you even go through the Old Testament before the cross, yeah. it's amazing who he used yeah. and how God moved through them, whether it's David or Solomon or... Oh, yeah. Gideon, like, I mean, if he can use them under that old covenant, then after the cross, we seem to be living pretty low compared to where we could be. That's a very good point, exactly. Yeah. So it would be great for us to, I want to hopefully unlock the body of Christ to step into this, who lives in us? Let's really go after that. And what does it mean for us now? Why do you think that it, it calls it a mystery? You know, it says, this is the mystery. And they could have gone in so many directions, because there's so many mysteries probably we don't understand. Totally. But yeah. it went straight to Jesus in us. You know, I think it's because mankind, humanity, have been looking for the supreme truth. Have been, there's a void in all of us. And so I think some of it is like, what is that? So we have people that will do bizarre things over the centuries. You know, they'll climb to the highest mountain to get closer to this mm -hmm. truth. Or they'll go to the depths of the earth. Or I mean, they'll just go to extreme measures. And so I think humanity recognized there's, there's a need for a, what we would say a savior. There's a need for this void to be filled. So I think when, when Jesus said, I'm going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, they understood it. It was like, you, you can't, no, we took years to build this building. Yeah. And obviously they didn't know what he was talking about. So I think yeah. the greatest mystery is he is the supreme truth. He is the source of all life. He's the reason why we exist. And he wants to live in us. So I, I always have fun thinking about, I couldn't imagine being the Apostle Paul. I don't know if he woke up one day and stumbled upon that revelation, but I think when he wrote Colossians, he was super excited. <laughs> I just figured out, if you will, the greatest mystery of all, yeah. and it's Christ in you. I, I'm sure he was rather excited. <laughs> yeah. You know, in our churches today, it's, it's almost like 
it's become a spectator sport that mm -hmm. people will come to church, watch someone in the fivefold do their stuff, yeah. feel like they have experienced God, and then go back to their same life that the world has. Yeah. Do you see this thing called Christ in you moving outside of the fivefold oh, ministry? Yeah. It, it, it changes the game for me. Uh, you know, I, you know, yeah, the answer is yes. It changes the game because for me, we live in a complex world. We, we have, we are confronted with challenges, problems, issues everywhere. And in some ways we're numb to it. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. So we just turn the TV off or we just go back to our normal life. Yeah. But if we study the life of Jesus, every problem that he encountered or every problem that encountered him, he had a solution for it. Yeah. There wasn't one situation where it's like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. And so I believe we're supposed to model our life after, after that. What, is, what does that mean? And if that Jesus did that, then he lives in us. Then I think, I, I personally think problems are actually attracted to us because Jesus lived in us. Right. And so in some cases, now I don't mean if I create problems in my own life, that's a different conversation, yeah. <laughs> which some of us are good at, you know, yeah. but, uh, but I think for, but I think for um, a lot of us, it's, we, we find ourselves in the most challenging, complex situation that, ha that don't have to do with us. I think it's because problems are attracted to Jesus. They, yeah. they seem to gravitate towards Jesus. And so I think, I think that's something that we need to realize. You know, one of the analogies that analogies I've heard about that is when I was a little kid and most kids if you were really hungry and you're going home from school your hunger is the need yep. and if mama is baking bread or apple pie you can smell that from half a block away yeah, and it true. attracts you yep. and it really is the Jesus in us it's not how good we look or how confident we act but I think people who are lost people who are struggling and hurting mm -hmm. They, there's this spiritual sensing, even if they're not, a, I just think they're attracted to the Christ in us, don't you think? Uh, I believe so. You know, uh, something I tell our church, I say we can't limit the anointing to what we think we can do. Yes. And so I think for a lot of the church, if I don't think I can do it, well, it's never been about what you can do. It's always been about who Jesus is and what he can do. Yeah. And so if we can get, if we can get the body of Christ to literally move into taking risk, because it's beyond our gift, it's beyond our skill set, it's because it really relies on who Christ is. So yeah. Yeah, I feel like Christianity has become pretty boring. Yeah. Like, yeah, like when you look around and we get raised up in church, everything seems to be about have helping you with your problems. But if the harvest is ripe and everywhere we go, people are open to the real Jesus, not yeah. our religion, you know, but, yeah. and there's so many, I mean, we literally could live an adventure if we just begin to open up and let Jesus use us, do things that we could never do on our own, yeah. but what an adventure it would be. Exactly, Yeah. A total adventure. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a break right here. When we come back, let's keep unpacking this book, Christ in You. I'll be right back with Eric Johnson. Statistically, um, the world's a better place than it was a century ago, statistically. It doesn't feel that way because media portrays yep. what, everything that's wrong. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today.
Get Social with Leon Fontaine. Follow him on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. With instant access through any mobile device, you can stay up to date with the latest news, comment on your favorite episodes, and watch insider sneak peeks. Bonus videos, inspirational posts, and practical teaching are just clicks away. Spirit Contemporary Social Media. Get social with Leon Fontaine. Welcome back. My guest today is Eric Johnson and this book, Christ in You. We're just unpacking thoughts from it, looking at some of these things. Eric, we were talking in the green room a little bit about this narrative you wanted to share. Tell me about that. Yeah, years ago, um, we had a, a leadership retreat in San Francisco. And I, and I appreciate art design. I, it's something I'd like to do on the side. And so we went into this art gallery in San Francisco. And I don't know if you're like me, but I, it takes a lot to impress me when it comes to art. Okay. And so I find myself like, ah, I don't, I'm not impressed. And so yeah. I'm going around this art gallery and I'm having this inner conversation with every painting or sculpture. <laughs> and it's something like, not impressive, <laughs> that's gross. I don't know who, you know, that whole process. Okay. Especially when you look at the price tag, you're like, I would not pay <laughs> anything for this. Yeah. And then another experience where I'm looking at this painting and I knew who painted it. So this was a different scenario. And I'm looking at it and I'm having the same dialogue. I'm not impressed. I didn't like the color usage, and I'm just, you know, I'm just critiquing, if you will. Well, then, guess who came and stood next to me while I'm having this inner dialogue? It was the actual artist. Ooh. And I said, oh, hi, how are you? And I kind of caught off guard, and I said, would, can you tell me what, what was going on when you painted this painting in particular? And she began to tell me about her emotions, her thoughts, the journey, where she was at in life, and what she was trying to convey on the canvas. And it was amazing. I noticed the transition from I didn't like the painting to all of a sudden I'm like, this is beautiful. Yeah. And what it was, I realized it because I didn't have the artist narrative on the painting. I didn't realize, I didn't see it through her eyes, if you will. Very good. And so I think sometimes when we approach humanity, we look at the world, mm -hmm. we have our own narrative. Good. We have the Genesis 3 narrative of like, yeah. humanity is just failed. Yes, but there's a greater narrative that we have to have before I believe we can really dive into this conversation of that God actually trusts you more than you trust yourself. Hmm. It's one of the most, you know, uh, that one definitely causes people to react. Yeah. But if we get God's narrative and what he was thinking when he created humanity and you and me, it changes the game for me. It really, oh, he had a, there's a much larger story at play here than just Genesis 3. It's not to it's the fall and the sin of man. It's not to say that's no longer, no, that's the only way to righteousness is to confess your sin and go to Jesus. No question. But there is a larger story at play. And then God's original design was, was to create you and me, to create humanity, to take dominion, to, yeah. to see the kingdom come. Amen. So that, that narrative thing that I try to take people back to, what was God thinking when he made humanity? Let's get that first before we unpack anything. Yeah, if we don't see things through his eyes, we're going to be very limited. We're never going to see down the road far enough to see yep. what his plans are. I think practically speaking, I think sometimes when I interact, because I'm a pastor, I interact with lots of people in complex, hard situation. And if I don't carry a love or grace for the person, I will postpone the meeting until I get it. Hmm. Because I don't want to interact with people through my narrative. Right. I don't want to interact people through my own experiences. I want to see them, okay, God, show me what you were thinking. Because then I'm a much better leader, much better father, much better husband, much better person when I, when I protect that value. So for me, practically speaking, I postpone meetings. I'll tell my assistant, I said, <laughs> let them know I can't meet with them just yet. I'm not ready, but whatever. Because yeah. I, I need to capture the heart of God for this person. And so Brilliant. I imagine if we actually turn on the TV and instead of criticizing people, or criticizing nations, if you will, talk about national issues. 
we ask you, okay, God, what was your heart for this person? I want to capture that before I can do anything. Until we get the heart of Christ and see through his eyes, we're pretty judgmental. Extremely. <laughs> Extremely. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. It's just like we judge people based yeah. on our little list. Yeah. And it's like once you judge them, you can't be used to reach them. Yeah. And yeah. so you're very, it's very true. It, no, it, we always wonder, how come I don't have favor in here? Well, it, I believe because of that. Yeah. We, we don't realize that us throwing stones when no one's looking. Yeah. It, I'm not going to open that door for you. You know, in our, in our church sites, we have an introduction that we use for every service. And we just say, welcome to Springs, and whichever leaders in which site. And they say, the culture of our church we call laugh, L-A-F. We love to laugh, but, the, and we go through each letter. You know, we, we want to learn to love. Yeah. But then A is to accept people the way they are. Yep. And that kind of throws people that we accept you the way you are, as messed up or as perfect, whichever you think you are. Mm -hmm. You're just accepted here. Yep. And that, of all the people who give their lives to Christ and attend our church, they'll say, well, I came because of the kids' ministry. I came because of the worship and praise. I came because of the Word. But almost everyone will say, when I heard that I was accepted the way I was, mm -hmm. that gave me a freedom to keep coming because we can't change people. Yep. You know, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to make you cleaners of fish. He said, you'll be fishers of men. We're going to catch them. And so I find that once they sit down and they realize, I love you the way you are, yep. that's when they open their heart mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he's the one that can really change them. Uh, totally. It, to come as you are. You yeah. Know? And I think the passage in Romans, you know, his goodness leads us to repentance. Yeah. You know, I think religion turned that around. If you mm -hmm. repent, then you experience the goodness of God. It's actually we're exposed to God's goodness, and it's in that in that experience we realize, oh, I've got to I've got to repent. I am now exposed to what I need to repent of. Yeah. And uh, and so I think relationship is drawn by is driven by the goodness of God. Yeah. But religion is driven by you have to do these things first before you experience that. And you so believe I think we need to bring that back in. Yeah, yeah. You believe it's a great day for the church today, don't you? I think it's the greatest time to be alive. Why? Tell me about it. We light shines the best in dark places. <laughs> and because of that, and historically, I mean, statistically, um, the world's a better place than it was a century ago. Statistically. It doesn't feel that way because media portrays yep. what, everything that's wrong. And yep. so I think the church has a great privilege and responsibility to talk about what's right. That is what's so good. good. And so totally we, need to get, we need to get that. better. We need to get better at living it, displaying it, communicating yep. it the goodness of God, because right now the world is overwhelmed with bad news. Yep. But if you look at statistics, social statistics, it's actually a better place. Poverty is going down. A lot of world issues are actually getting less. I agree. But it doesn't feel that way. No, because it's all we notice is a negative. You know, I'm always telling people with your end times doctrine, whatever it is you believe, because there's a lot of them out there, please believe in a victorious church. Absolutely. Please believe that, you know, someone says, well, how can you say we're a victorious church? Look at the world and how bad it is. I said, Go back to the bubonic plague when like a quarter of the population of the planet died. Yeah. Go back to World War I. Go back to, you know, the witches and burning at stakes. I mean, go back 2,000 years, there was 120 Christians. Today, there's like what? Over a billion on the it's planet? A great point, yeah. Things exactly. are getting better. Yeah, no, totally. It's a great point. And I think, I think we just need to realize we live in the greatest time in history. We have more opportunities in front of us. And a lot of it has to do with, um, if, do I have Christ in me? to get me out of here someday, or do I have Christ in me to see the kingdom come? And Jesus spent most of his time talking about bringing the kingdom to earth. Mm -hmm. He mentioned a few times about going to heaven, yeah. obviously. Right. But a majority of his conversation was about what do we do to bring the kingdom to the earth? But most of the church is talking about getting out of here. So how do you see that? Talk to me about that, Eric. Like, so is the kingdom here now? Is it coming? How do you see that? I think it's both. both. Jesus okay. said it's that hand. And I think if you study scripture on the word kingdom, Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government shall have no end. The word no end actually means the end does not even exist. It's going to go on. It, it, it's like it's not even an option of what could happen. So not, and then the other one says the train fills the temple. The idea behind that is he's, he's in the temple and he continues to come in the temple. Yeah. And so I think it's kingdom now and it's kingdom later. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the problem that I would... So uh, by that you mean it... It's going to be of no end. His, his kingdom, his government is going to continue to increase on this planet. Victory after victory, country after country. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's flowing, it's flowing. 
the challenge I would, I, the conversation I love is, well, if it's meant for later, how do we get it now? I, this is my personal, I feel like if you've seen something, you can have it now. Hmm. So I think this is why you have David. David would call a man after God's heart, I think primarily because he realized God was after something else other than just sacrificing animals. Yeah. He said that, I forget the reference, it's the right column, right page in my Bible. So I, I, <laughs> I know where it is in my Bible. Yeah, right? I know the location. Yeah. And it says, God is after our heart, not just sacrifices with uh, animals with hooves and horns. Mm. I think David tapped, he saw something. Yeah. And I think because he saw something, he was able to live in it presently. Beautiful. And Abraham was another man in the Bible yes. who said he believed and God gave him righteousness. Well, righteousness wasn't, if you will, going to be made available until the cross. Yeah. But Abraham tapped into something. Mm -hmm. So I think in the kingdom, when you see something, whatever was meant for later, you can have it now. Very true. So, so I, I'm kind of in the kingdom now, kingdom later. That, that's, yeah, it's at hand, it's yep. now. Yeah. You know, when you look at the Bible, especially for those who are attending our churches, people often feel like, wow, it's good for pastors, it's good for leaders. But almost all the teaching in the Bible is Jesus doing one-on-one. -on -one. We don't have a lot of training on how to do big conferences, how to speak to crowds of thousands, but we have chapter after chapter after chapter of Jesus yeah. dealing with one person. Yeah. So this Christ in you, this book, it's not just talking to pastors. No. It's not just talking to leaders. It is saying to the body of Christ, yeah. He is in you. Yes. And everything in the New Testament, the vast majority is teaching you how to minister to one yeah. person, which everybody can do. Yeah, no one, no one's excuse from this. No, no. <laughs> That's so true. You know, often I tell people that when you go to a football game, you don't see the coaches on the field playing. Mm -hmm. You know, wouldn't that be a funny football game if we went to a football game and all the players were sitting on the bench and on the field is three chubby coaches from each team yeah. playing each other. It would be but, fun to watch, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the church world can become if we're not careful. Yeah. The congregation watches mm -hmm. while the coaches or the five-fold ministry do our stuff with the gifts of the Spirit and the things going on. Uh, but I believe that we're the coaches that are should equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Yep. Yep. And the coaches are usually the worst kickers, the worst passers, the worst runners, but they're amazing coaches. Yep. And I think that this Christ in you is a crucial and important point, that it's not Christ in the leaders of our church. He's there. It's Christ from our children to our great-grandparents. Absolutely. Every one of them is capable of moving yep. in the things of God, the gifts of God. But they, are, they, are, they can be an answer to anyone that's got a question. Yep. Absolutely. Man, final thought before we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're having a good time. I think we, I would just encourage anyone to dive into this and ask what does Christ mean, Christ in you mean for now? Yeah. And I, I believe the Holy Spirit will unpack it if people ask. So good. Thanks yeah. for being with us, Eric. Absolutely. My guest today has been Eric Johnson, and we're talking about this book, Christ in You. I'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this Spirit Contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I really hope you enjoyed our conversation with Eric Johnson today. You know, the cool thing about this show is I get to welcome pastors and authors from all walks of life. I want to talk to you about something that's really important to me. It's this concept of spirit contemporary. You know, so many people, when they hear the things of the spirit shared or the gospel shared, if it's done in a judgmental or a condescending way, they are so turned off. And especially in the first world, in North America, for example, Europe, people just back away. And so it's crucial for us that I look at two things that are so important when sharing the gospel. Be spiritually alive. 
I mean filled with God's love so that you value the people that are around you and then learn to speak and conduct yourself in a contemporary way that connects with people. Because if you don't connect with people, they're not going to listen to you. And that's what makes this show so valuable. You know, for a gift of $30 or more today, you're going to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around this planet in a way that is relevant and contemporary, authentic. And so many people are responding as they hear the gospel, but shared in a spirit contemporary way. You know, we live our lives often so focused on ourselves and we wonder, you know, isn't there more to life? One of the most incredible things you can do is become a part of this family. Your gift is going to see names written in the Lamb's book of life. Your gift is going to cause people to come to know Christ. For $30 or more, we're going to send you this CD pack that I know is going to inspire you and help you in your everyday life. Why don't you go to your phone right now? and be part of an answer to so many people who are hungry and looking for Jesus. They just don't know what that answer is yet. God bless you. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Join us next time on The Leon Show. Our bodies are dependent on water. Water is the most unique chemical substance on this planet, right? Mm -hmm. It cleanses. It's, it's so unique. We can't live without water. But maybe the water on this life is artificial life support to the streams of living water 